impervious, invincible, impenetrable. This POI quite literally trivializes all hordes. In this video, I'll show you all how to make use of a sneaky exploit to make yourself untouchable throughout the entire horde, no matter the game stage. Welcome survivors. This is Aaronette of the Pseudoposse and in a recent video, I received a displayed comment here stating that this particular POI, the Asgard residence has an underground tunnel leading into a cultist chapel, which isn't the important part. Allegedly, both the building and terrain blocks are invulnerable, just like the traders in Bedrock, making the same exact sound when you hit them. Except you don't need to dig down many layers to reach it, like Bedrock, and you won't get kicked out of it like the traitor. Meaning, you can immediately make yourself invincible early game, in theory. Let's dive into this and see what we can do. So let's head to that location. Don't pay any attention to that on the left there. That's for an upcoming video. In debug menu, I'm going to bring up the open POI teleporter and search for the POI by the game's reference to it. House Old Tutor 01. And there we are, very unassuming. So if we bust on in, kill the local inhabitants, and head through this accidental hole here, entering what looks like a very culty room, I'll stroll down the stairs, punch this wall here, and no sound. And it took damage. So far, not looking good. Punch the dirt, also no good. Punch block, nope. Punch wall, nope. What? Hold a second. Wait, that's the sound. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be everywhere, but let's continue to investigate how pervasive this is. Following subsequent punching in different places, I've determined that the invincible parts of this POI are indeed the stone terrain blocks forming the contours of the cave. Every other shape and terrain block is quite destroyable. Given that we need to determine if this will be protective enough to actually shield us from the horde, or if they can worm their way between the invincible parts and reach us. And the best way I figure to do that is to blow shit up. I love science. All right, so during my rampaging destruction, I noticed some things. First, pretty much the top layer of stone terrain is invincible, meaning blocks supporting it underneath are not. So the invulnerable parts could in theory be undermined and collapsed. Secondly, the part that has the best coverage and holds up the best is this part of the cave right outside the cultist chapel. You are essentially protected on all sides, assuming zombies don't make their way down into the chapel from the ladder or by tunneling through the chapel roof above the stone shapes. Now that we have narrowed down the region in which we will plant ourselves, what's the game plan? My idea is to funnel them down through the chapel and come across a pit we are going to dig out since we are very close to bedrock. Then I'll construct a zombie loop for them to repeat while we sit untouched in the invincible zone. Zombies generally like to dig above you when you are underground, so I will block off everything in the basement to try and force them to come down the chapel path. After that, I dug out the pit, built some walls around the non-invincible terrain as I don't want them to collapse the invulnerable parts, and I built a zombie path that works very effectively at tricking zombies to run off the path down to the ground. I tested it, worked out all the kinks, started the horde, and they're digging down. I was hoping to avoid this by simply blocking off the basement and not having to build anything over the ground to deter them. But within my great disappointment, something unexpected but beautiful happened. While they are not following my carefully planned and meticulously engineered path, they are, however, stuck between a rock and a hard place. Like, quite literally, rock, hard place. That hard place is the invincible terrain of the POI that they just cannot break through. So, we can greatly reduce the amount of work needed to make this POI last through the horde, which is good actually. More minimal effort, the better for all of you. How minimal do we need to go? Well, let's establish a little control to our experiment. I'll sit or, or stand myself in the same spot, making no modifications to the POI. Start the horde and watch what happens. Immediately, we can see that they proceed through the house since the basement is not blocked. At least that part of my previous design worked. What is interesting that despite the fact that they could just run all the way down to me, the path is too long for them, which can happen when building a base. If they feel the path to the player's position is too long, they'll just try to beat through any structures in their way. Normally, that is bad as they could collapse your base, but here it's actually very, very good, as our structure is quite unbeatable. It took them two hours, but eventually a group managed to find their way down to me, I think through the chapel somehow. Pretty impressive that it took that long for anyone to reach me, and they ended up not reaching me by the seemingly direct route. Based on this test, I think all we need to do is to block off the basement and force them to dig down to us. Fortunately, we only need to break some wood blocks, the stairs to the basement, making this very easy to do early game. Then we can block off some of the corridors and make the walls a bit thicker for extra insurance. Early game, 
Cobblestone is certainly suitable, though I'll use concrete here since I'm testing this on a higher game stage. And as we predicted, the zombies dig straight down toward us and immediately get stuck. They branch off a bit, but never try to go down the chapel route, which remains unblocked or ever make a breach. They do, however, occasionally clip through the walls, which is something we can easily take care of. By the end of the horde, they dug their little cavity here and not much else. Not bad for simply blocking the off the basement and not doing much else. Makes me feel a bit sad about all the work I had done previously. Well, if you guys would like to see a base design similar to that in the future, let me know in the comments below and I'll show you all how to build it. Anyways, we're not quite done. I've got two more open questions to resolve. How to prevent the zombie clipping and is this base reusable? After they dig out the hole from a horde, can we do it again? First, Let's tackle the clipping problem. Let's keep this extremely simple and put a railing underneath the cave ceiling and enclose that so we can trap any zombies clipping through and eliminate them. If you are later in the game, you could make it more fancy and set up some turrets or dart traps or something to kill them automatically. But early game, you can easily do it yourself. Okay, the final test. Can this POI be used again? And the answer is yes. It can! They dug out a bit more space and otherwise got stuck. A few clipped through again, but our railings caught them and we blasted them. And at the end of the horde, all you need to do is climb up the ladder and run away, letting the zombies despawn. So, final verdict? This POI is stupid, and I can't believe it is in the game. But hey, since it's here, might as well exploit it. Naturally, this POI would make the perfect base. During the horde, stand here. All other hours, you can set up all your crafting tables, crates, and whatnot in the chapel. You don't really need to maintain the base itself, though you might consider plugging up some of the tunnel they dig every now and then, because do recall, it is possible they could undermine the invincible terrain, though unlikely since they are digging into them, as they think it is the shortest route to you, not realizing they can't actually go through it. Well, that's it. Enjoy the awesomeness of this POI. Thanks again to the commenter who suggested this POI. Well done. If you all have any other bright ideas, feel free to share them below. On that note, thanks for watching everyone. Please like and subscribe as it helps our little corner of the internet grow. And a special shout out to all of our patrons whose generosity helps us grow a bit faster by enabling us to funnel more into the, our channel quality. This is Eerie Knight signing off. See you all next time.